Now, obviously, there are hundreds of great rock and roll bass intros throughout history, but that's not what we're doing today. We're focusing on the decade of the 90s. Because we are children of the 90s, and we're going to go through these intros in chronological order. Let's get into it. Okay, so this first band, I actually rode to see them for the first time on my BMX bike when I was 12 years old. The band is Ned's Atomic Dustbin, and I didn't even know until Ian told me just recently, like five minutes ago, that there's two bass players in the band. Two bass players in the yeah. band. Gab, who are they? Alex Griffin and Matt Cheslin. Alex Griffin and Matt Cheslin. One played the high parts, one played low parts. Alex High, Matt plays the regular bass. I love it. And this track is called Grey Cell Green. Check it out. That's bass. Yes, it's bass. And then the low bass comes in. Ah! I love this intro. Now, although it sounds like a guitar, that's Alex Griffin playing the high part, just playing fifths on the bass like this. Sounds so much like a guitar, doesn't it? And if you want the tab and notation for this, we put a PDF together for you, just for you, and it's completely free. Link is in the description. Go grab it, and then you can follow along as we're going through this video. Now, the next one we've got up, I'm gonna leave this all to you. Yeah. All to you is <laughs> Jerry Was a Race Car Driver by Primus Les Claypool on bass, and it is a brute. And now, the song that wouldn't die. <laughs> Do you think he still likes playing it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that Carl Thompson, classic beast. There's this thing with less of like a Bonkers. flat five can kind of move around. It doesn't matter so much, honestly, where that figure is. It's the rhythm of it. Still sounds like Jerry was a race car driver, right? Sounds like a dare <laughs> gone wrong. Okay, so next up is one of our favorites. We got really excited, but we're like, oh, oh, oh it's in the 90s, we can so use this excited. one. Check it out, Jeremy by Pearl Jam. Jeff Ament with that Hamer 12. Look at how many strings are on that bass. Look at all those tuning machines. I'm as impressed with his hat, though, as the bass. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and the harmonics are on bass on the record. But yeah. then live yeah. guitar players do them. And then the sp Yeah. At home, drawing pictures. So good. Is that Dave Abraziz on drums there, yes. Scott? Is yes. it? Yes! Oh! <laughs> With the nerdiness. Come on, coming in. <laughs> I love this band. I love Jeff Immens playing. Um, here's the deal. I don't down, have. You've well, got yeah. it down. Yeah, but I don't have a 12 string. You can do this on a four with a little bit of effects trickery, okay? <laughs> I did not expect it to sound that good. Oh! <laughs> what is it? That's okay, it. So. Yep, and then the harmonics are. This bit? Yep. Pick, obviously. Pick, absolutely. Allison's <laughs> signature pick. <laughs> huh? Don't leave home huh? without it. Don't leave home <laughs> without it. Yep. Yep, and here's the harmonics. Then the next uh, part of the harmonics. Here. Uh, yeah. I mean, such a classic line. And I feel like not everyone knows that this was recorded on bass, but it's indeed a Hamer 12 string bass. What I'm doing is I'm just putting a pitch shifter up. I have two of them, one simulating one octave up, and then another one doubling that an octave up a little bit out of tune, so it gives that sort of like. Oh, is that how you're doing it? Yeah, yeah. the chorusy shimmer. Yeah, right? it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Nirvana, lounge act. That's so rock and roll. Remember when this came out? So good. I don't know about you, I was like a huge hair metal fan, and when Nirvana came out, it scared me. 
I didn't know what to make of it. I was <laughs> rocking some hair as well. Yeah. Not like now. Yeah. yeah. I was like into Vi and Joe Satriani and I... Yes. And then Nevermind dropped and I was like, ah. Oh. I yes. can remember a friend of mine playing it. And I think he played me Bleach first. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm not sure about this. But I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it. And this is a great bass line as well. And you might not know, we can actually do a video on this, but there's so many great bass intros on Nirvana records. We, we didn't know. We kind of discovered it putting this video together. But this line specifically, there are so many wrong examples online of how we played this. Yes. So we are here to set the record straight. Okay, so it's a pretty simple bass line, but you've got to get the... Kind of got to get the right vibe. He's got this kind of guitar thing going on. Yeah, sort you know, of it's rummy. Yeah, exactly. He's also not going. It's not it, in it's position. Not, it's not in position. It's right. like it's rock and roll, dude. Yeah, dude. It's got a weird note in it that everybody gets wrong as well. You'll see he goes, and everybody online goes. Yeah. He doesn't play that. He goes. Ooh, that's C. Yeah. yeah. And then second time round. Yeah, again, all the tab and notation, you can get it, it's in the description below. Next up, we move into 92, Rage Against the Machine, the great Tim Comerford on bass, Bullet in the Head. Bright Stingray. Oh yeah. They never show the bass player. Oh no. <laughs> Can you remember the first time you heard this album? I can, actually. So good. It's so, it's it's like, so good. Can you guys remember the first time you heard that album? I, I remember where I was. I do too, actually. Yeah, a friend had come round to my house. It's in my bedroom. I have my drum kit set up. <gasps> For me, it was at school before Mr. Anderson's history lesson. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> I want to say, hey, if you have a story of when you first heard any one of these bass lines, please drop it down in the comments below. And when you're doing that as well, let us know if you want more of videos like this where we're looking at sort of like bass intros from the 90s. Do you want bass intros from the 70s? Bass intros from the 80s? Well, and you're going to have to be subscribed to the channel, obviously, if you want to be notified of all that great stuff coming. Hint, hint. hint. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> anyway, how do you play this thing? Okay, so here we go. I think it starts out with third finger. Is it just like an E7? Yeah, all it is is E7. Yeah, but if you listen to the original, we can't use the original because it'll get, you know, pulled out of the video. But if you listen to the original, I thought it was gonna be. Right, like hard. It's not, no. it's really chilled, it's like. That's right. It's almost kind of in a jokey way, setting you up to expect something completely different. Yes. You hear the intro and it's almost sort of like, it's not swung, but I imagine. <laughs> like a Smoking shuffle? Smoking jazz, <laughs> you know, and then suddenly it just goes like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next up is Alice in Chains Wood, one of my favorites actually. Spectre bass, is yeah, it? Yeah, oh yeah, bass. Spectre NS2, Mike Starr on bass. Woo! That pick sound. It's so grindy. Ugh. One of the greatest grunge bands. Jerry Cantrell on guitar, obviously. So many of these tunes actually are a half step flat. So I'm going to do it proper. I'm going to drop this down a half step. You could drop your whole bass down. Right now, I'm just going to drop the E string down a half step, and then I'll show you the line. Two things I want to know. Two things is like, what are you doing to your tone to get that vibe? And secondly, are you doing anything with your pick specifically to get that chuck a go go you know, that Yeah, thing. right. Because yeah. it, it feels like more than just like ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I mean, I have flats on this right now, so, and it's not a Spectre, it doesn't have active pickups. That, like, Mike Star NS2 thing is so cool in signature. But what I'm doing to kind of, like, get close to the vibe, I'm putting on a bit of amp emulation in the HX Stomp. So this is just a slightly broken up SVT yeah. into an 810, and then I'm 
picking back by the bridge, a tiny bit of palm mute, and then I'm thinking about backbeat. I want it to feel like it's grooving mm. before the drums come in. So I want it to feel like this. Yeah. And then add the notes. It's that, it's the cut of the, are you angling the pick at all? Because Maybe if I play this. Touch. It's like real clicky, isn't it? It's yeah, his is sort so of clicky. Like this, it... Yeah. I've got flats on this. I know. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, we need some rounds. Right. <laughs> but yeah, where, when you angle the pick, right, it gets a little scrapier, yeah. even on flats. Yeah. It adds some like percussion to the top mm. end of the sound. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, because he's a bit of a low slinger, right? Yeah. Your pick kind of ends up at an angle. Yeah. Yeah. Got the cool vibe going on. Next up is Weezer Only in Dreams. Dude, blue album. Was this a big I deal used for to you? love this album. Yes. I did love this album. <laughs> Me too. Super clean bass, isn't it? Mad sharp on bass. Clean with a pick. The harmony is kind of surprising for me when it all comes in. I'm like, ooh. Oh, Hit it. here we go. And the whole thing is tuned down half a step. Yes, so I have the whole bass tuned down half a step. It's about evenness. 10 points to anybody that can name where that started. Who started it? Tuning down. Which guitar player started tuning down to E flat? Let us know in the comments. As you were, sir. As you were. <laughs> okay, here we go. The opposite of the of the baseline we've just been looking at before, which is Alice in Chains. Yes. Also play with the pig, but all angled and, and like crunchy. crunchy. That. This is yeah. like super clean. So when yes. you're playing something like this, you've got to take a, a completely different approach. Next up is one of my favorite bass intros of all time. I think it's incredible. It's Doug Wimbish with Living Color, 1993 stain record. This is called Wall. Ah. Uh. Outrageous. Then this. <laughs> That's all Doug, dude. All the bass. Now, unfortunately, today we haven't got all of the whammy pedal and stuff that Doug Wimbush used on the track to do that live and play it. But what we do have is Ian's twin brother, Magnus. <laughs> yeah, no way. We got you. Not a chance. You might not have seen Magnus before. He's, you know, very similar to Ian and actually <laughs> is also a badass bass player. Magnus, <laughs> take it away. Okay. I've got a whammy pedal hooked up right now. I've got just a touch of drive chorus and then that timed delay. He's the better twin. He's the better twin. Oh, hey. <laughs> It's so fun and it's really hard. With the whammy pedal, that's the thing that creates the ramp. <laughs> Two octave setting on the whammy pedal, that's how you get all that awesome, <laughs> right? All the harmonics. Thank you, Magnus. Such an inspiration. Oh, such now, an inspiration. Who would, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a brother like that. Anyway, who we got next? We've got Josephine Wiggs from The Breeders playing Cannonball on her Stingray. Check this out. Ah! Great tone. It's so cool, it's so distinct. Yeah, and then the like, key yeah. change, right? Sound of the 90s. Oh. So she's sliding up to an A at first, right? Right? And then. Right, That's it! <laughs> the A, right, starts you thinking about it's gonna be in this tonality. And then it's going from B flat to E flat. And that's the whole line. Is this stuff cruising by too fast for you? Never fear. We put together a beautiful PDF workbook with all of the tab and notation. It's in the link in the description below. Grab it. It's all for free. 
Next up, Green Day. Dookie, the track is long viewed. The bass player is... Mike Dirt. Mike Dirt, take it away. The slide that he does? <laughs> like, yes. Oh. Ah, the double stop thing? Yeah. Part of his sound is that he's got it, he's another low slinger. Yes. So we talked about this earlier, he's slinging it low, which means <laughs> my Allison signature pick let me down. That means when he's, oh, when he's a, it's your signature pick. As he's like striking the string, he's getting that top end. Yes. Do you want to show them how to play it? Because um, yeah. we've had to tune down again. Yep. Mike tunes his bass. A semitone flat. Yes. So the whole thing is an E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, right? And the whole thing, I love when he does this. Oh. And when you're playing that open, when you're playing the top line, da -de -da -da, you've got to have that open string yeah. ringing with it as well. Yeah, I always thought it was like... Uh, But it isn't. It's not the it's, vibe, yeah, yeah. And it creates all this tension. Which is why you have to tune down to get the line, to actually play it along with the That's record. That's right. Otherwise, we could just move it down a semitone, but then you can't use that open string That's for right. anybody that was wondering, okay? So if you want to, again, if you want to grab the tab and notation for that and play it in detail, see the details, the link is in the description. Next up from Jar of Flies, our second Alice in Chains entry on the list, but I don't care. I love this song so much. This is Rotten Apple. Clean. Oh. Active. Yeah. Maybe a Spectre also. Yeah, very different from the last one though, tone wise. So right? different. And I believe this is Mike Inez on bass now. Ooh. Different bass player? Different bass player. Gav, is that correct? Yes! Again, we've had to tune down to E flat here because those guitar players like the E flats. Yeah, and I mean, here's the deal. Again, I have a bass with flat wound strings on it. I don't have that bright active thing that Mike Inez has for this. So what I'm gonna do to compensate, I'm gonna turn on a little bit of chorus and I'm gonna pick back by the bridge. Right, make sure all those knobs are up. So when you, are you playing E, D, and the top A there? On that, that is shoot. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, called, that's, just a, that's just a D and an A oh, together. Okay. And then I'm, I guess I'm using my second finger to mute. Because it looked like you were doing oh, some sure, sure. fancy chords. <laughs> ah. Nothing fancy, <laughs> nothing fancy in 90s bass intros, really. It's about like this rock and roll yeah. thing, but I'm just using this finger to mute. As it's all done on the D and the G. Yeah. Thing. Then this thing, that's tricky. Are you playing them all or are you hammering it off? I guess I'm pulling this one off. Then I'm playing. So a combo of pull-offs and hammer-ons there, yeah. Beautiful, Thank love you. it. Okay, so next up we've got Adam Yao playing with the Beastie Boys and the track is obviously Sabotage. And now they're part of the big Lollapalooza tour. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, Beastie Boys. Dude, I saw this on Letterman in real time. What, you, you watched this? I was watching it. Look at that jazz bass. So good. Oh. Oh. That's still into the downbeat. So good. Oh. I like how he's wearing it too, like. Yeah. There's also another one. There's also, like it breaks down to just him. You know that? <laughs> oh, 
Oh man. It is a tricky one. It's really strummy, right? So I switch bases because this has fresh rounds on it. It's so bright. So I'm just putting on a little bit of drive into an amp sim and I've got this. Ah, oh, it's way <laughs> trickier than you think because he's doing this. Yeah. You're rocking back and forward between these two notes, aren't That's you? Right. So You could play it this way. Because that's what, that's the notes. That's what he's right? playing. Those are the notes. But then you don't get the, yeah. Keep going. Come on. <laughs> Next up is Tool, the great Justin Chancellor, playing this cool, creepy bass ostinato intro on 46 and 2. Wall bass? I think it is. It is today. Is it, is it the first record? Because he played a stingray on the first record. Oh, Gav! <laughs> what is it, Gav? And while Gav's finding it, Ian's going to show you how to play it. <laughs> Gav and Lydia coming in with that knowledge. The second record, he used a stingray. He didn't use the wall until maybe after this, right? So check it out. I have a bit of light chorus. I have both pickups on full. I want to get a bright pick sound. I want to leave this D string droning. Yeah. Is that all hammer-ons and pull-offs? When you yeah. Say, yeah. Hammer-on, pull-off. Pull-off? Yeah, hammer-on. Hammer yes. Yeah, so all the hammer whole thing, hammer and pull-offs. So if you're trying to get them together, which hopefully you are, it's a great, great riff to learn to, you know, get that stuff under your hands. He's playing it really lightly as well. Like yeah, that's really, right. It's, it's kind of light, he's approached. You're totally right. Justin Chancellor picks a little closer to the neck. I tend to default back here. But listen to this, you get closer to his sound actually if you go nearer the neck. Mm. It's kind of all mellow, isn't it? Yeah. But the next one is the Dave Matthews band, Ooh. Stefan Lassard. Stefan. Stefan. Stefan Lassard. Stefan Lassard, and the track is called Crush. Oh. Playing a modulus, dude. Great bass line. It is. Stingray in the shell suit? <laughs> I guess so. Is, yeah, is this the flea bass? Yeah. No, I don't think it's the flea bass. But I think it's like Modulus's version of the Stingray. Dave Matthews live in Central Park. If you haven't checked it out, it's it's <sighs> it's it's one to catch. Hang on, is it rock, dude? I'm calling shenanigans on this one. It is today. It is today. <laughs> We're what's putting the bass in. line. Yeah, what's the bass line? I'm changing. I'm changing to this. I'm changing bases out. Going back to flats. Okay, so here, I've got the bass back with flats and I'm gonna play. That's it. So the only thing for me, I reckon just to point out, you know, it's just like a, it's a B minor, so root fives, sevens, stuff like that, but. It's that. Yeah. You know, just to. And I think I think he's sliding it. Oh. But it's just getting the vibe right, isn't it? It's yeah. Just, it's really laid back and it's it's really beautiful. And check it out too. If you did this. Mm, it's not the vibe, is it? Yeah. Right. It's about the. Especially that seven, that flat seven, making it so short. Right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Beautiful line. Next up, 1999. Just sneaking in there. Don't you dare pretend. Don't you pretend. I'm a pretending. You didn't love this record. Sam Rivers with Limp Biscuit rearranged. 
think about it. Come on. That comes in great. The drums come in just half, halfway through. Everybody loves to say they didn't like Limp Biscuit, but you did. I know you did. Oh, is that the vibe? Oh. It is with it. <laughs> okay, I think we've got Sam Rivers playing. Oh. Nailed it. And these trills can be tricky because it's really a hammer on, a pull off, and then a slide. So there's one, two, three, four notes happening, but you only articulate once. Yeah, but that's a cool bass line. I feel like we've forgotten about Sam Rivers. Don't you forget. So next up is Around the World. Flea on bass, obviously. Chili Peppers is the band. And for this, they're gonna need some fuzz. <laughs> oh. Like the brightest distortion sound. Crazy. Mashanti. Oh. Dude, you have to tell me about the tone, what's going on down here with the fuzz. Yeah. Also, what are you doing with your pickup selector to make this happen? Okay, well, in terms of the pickups, all I've got is the bridge pickup on because you want the sound to be super harsh. Yeah. You don't want it on the neck pickup. Ooh, too it, woolly. It's too woolly, you want it super. Okay, and then in terms of t tone, I've got a little bit of reverb on over there. And then I've just got the way huge pork and pickle. It's a beast. It's a beast. I've got it, it's all on fuzz, it's all up. And then I've got the tone cranked as well. Again, to give it that. Oh, you know, like, it's so yeah. bright. And then in terms of playing it, it's a bit of a beast actually. Out of all of these bass lines, this was the one that we probably spent the most time right at the top of the video going, it's a monster. like, what is he doing here? Yeah. You know, and it's what I did, I broke this into two sections to help myself learn it. You've got this. Yeah, so. And then you've got a that's the first section, so again. Next section. All the way down. All the way down. It's just down the E minor pentatonic system, uh, pentatonic scale, including that flat five yeah, there. Yeah, that's cool. And then when you stitch it all together, it sounds like this. Yes. Now, we did the 90s today, but if you want more decades, 60s, 70s, 80s, I challenge you to come up with the 2000 teens. Yeah. I would love to know what you want in any of these other decades. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss that. Let us know in the comments what you wanna see, what decade, what songs, what artists, and we will make that video for you.